Welcome back. I thought we should take a look at another example of factoring a binomial when we have a difference of squares that can sometimes cause some problems. We should already be familiar with the technique for factoring a difference of squares where if we have a difference, the first term is a perfect square and the second term is a perfect square, then it factors into two binomial factors where one is a plus b, the other factor is a minus b. So looking at our example, notice how we have 4x squared minus 36 and since 4x squared is a perfect square, 36 is a perfect square and we have a difference, it may be tempting to factor this as a difference of squares, but remember the first step in factoring is always to factor out the greatest common factor. And 4x squared and 36 do share a common factor of 4. We can show this because 4x squared means 4 times x squared and we can write 36 as 4 times 9. So the first step in factoring this should be to factor out the greatest common factor of four. So we factor out four. Notice how we'd be left with a factor of x squared minus nine. The binomial factor is still a difference of squares, so now we'll factor this again. So we'll still have a factor of four, then we'll have two binomial factors. The two equal factors of x squared are x and x. The two equal factors of nine are three and three. One's a sum and one's a difference. This is how to correctly factor four x squared minus thirty-six completely. So again, if we go back and take a look at the original binomial, if we did try to factor four x squared minus thirty-six as a difference of squares without factoring out the greatest common factor, let's see what that would look like. Again, we would have two binomial factors. The two equal factors of four x squared would be two x and two x. The two equal factors of thirty-six would be six and six. One of these would be a sum and one would be a difference. And this would not be factored completely because notice how each of these binomial factors contains a common factor of two. We could factor two x plus six by factoring out a two, leaving us with x plus three. We could also factor a two out of the second binomial, leaving us with two times the quantity x minus three. And then of course two times two is equal to four, so we'd have four times the quantity x plus three times the quantity x minus three. So this was kind of messy, and that's why it's always important to factor out the greatest common factor as the first step in factoring. Again, a common error is to factor the original binomial into this form here, which as we just showed, would not be factored completely. Okay, I hope you found this example helpful.